we just passed the ski slope. And before that, we did something really rad. <laughs> it's definitely our first cycling up to start touring. Keep on smiling, counting. One, two. I find this fun. Fun, like destroying my body. I just find it crazy. Like, I find it insane that you can actually climb a mountain with a pair of skis. My name is Henna and I'm 29 years old and I love being outdoors. Now the last couple of years it's been mainly snowboarding or backcountry snowboarding, surfing and cycling. I would say those are the, my three, three favorite things to do. It was a 8.5 kilo bike and I can tell you it's not that anymore. How many days have you been skiing this year? <laughs> I am Sami Sauri. I am, I guess, an adventurous cyclist uh, or athlete. I don't know how to call it. Now I have been skiing two days this season. <laughs> I think I'll be nervous the, the day I have to put skis next to this, like, two crazy... Like, these two women are, like, badass. <laughs> Back is able to move, like... Yeah. So we need what was to... the sound? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so weird when you say the Swedish name in English. I'm Malva Björkman. I've been skiing since I was two and I have loved it since then. So Malva, yeah. how many days have you been cycling this winter? Two. The plan is to ride from Innsbruck to Lake Garda through the Dolomites and include as much skiing and snowboarding along the way as possible. The challenge with the plan is to find the snow to ski and snowboard on, uh, because this winter has been bad, to be honest. Like, basically no snow. The feeling when we started, I was a bit stressed nine days in a row of ski touring, that's fine. If you combine it with biking as well, that I'm not that used to. Yeah, I was a bit scared. I want to break free here. I want to break free from your life. Oh, oh, oh. I want to break free. God knows. Ah! I'm losing it. Me too. Ah! Ah! Who books a place on top of the steepest hill? I think we already can see the tour, can't we? I think it's there. there, yeah, it's there, that one. Planning for a ski bike trip differs a lot from just planning a bikepacking trip. When you plan a ski bike trip, which obviously happens during the winter months, you know that all the roads won't be clear of snow. 
so that way it's kind of risky to start including a lot of the smaller roads. Holy moly, look at the mountains! Oh, this is stunning! And on ski bike trips, the, the cycling itself is not the main thing. The main thing is to move from one skiing and snowboarding spot to another spot. So it's more from planning a route from A to B and to make it as easy and enjoyable as possible instead of trying to include all the hardest climbs and gnarliest roads. It's definitely your first cycling up to start touring. I've not done it before. Oh, I see some cars parked. That was a climb. The stats are 12.4 kilometers and 655 meters up. That's a decent breakfast. The first time on the trip, I feel like, yeah, I can, I can handle this. <laughs> I can do this. Girls, I freaking love this jacket. It's awesome. Yeah, but you know, it's warm and windproof and... Doing the job. Yeah, making me happy. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, I'm so thankful for being here. And things can have been different, especially if I think about the accident this year. I brought my avalanche backpack for this project because earlier this season I was in an avalanche accident. My backpack was the uh, reason why I didn't get covered. Här uppe runt stenkanten är det en brottkant och så åkte lavinen som och jag stannade där. I was so thankful for not being covered. Um, and I could just like, I could just feel that I wasn't sore. I couldn't feel any pain and I didn't have any broken legs or arms. I can just be here walking, having fun, enjoying life. And it's awesome. <laughs> So the second day was a bit rougher in the sense that we had the first bike to get to the ski tour, do 600 meters of climbing, then do the ski tour, which included 800 meters of climbing. And then after the ski tour, we still had to ride 30 kilometers. Today we have a cycling day, so we will try to now finally get to Dolomites, which is the main focus of the trip, to ski in Dolomites and have time to ski there. So today we will do 90 kilometers with bikes and get to Altabaria or a bit past Altabaria, close to the start of the tour tomorrow. So that's the goal, only biking today. Oh, the radio, I nearly pee in the radio. Maybe we can ride here. It's too narrow. But can you see the first Dolomite peaks? There's a ski resort there as well. Ugly in the pretty way, maybe? Yeah, like so rough industry areas of that part, but kind of cool that way. Are you good? Oh. 
Are you all right, Sammy? Ay, 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 my neck. Oh, girl. Yeah, it went down. Uh, yeah I think you hit uh, that on a rock for sure. Please. I broke the ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Look what's coming. What the hell? The, the tricky part was interesting. First of all, we had no idea that there is, we thought it's just like the road the whole way. But then we just uh, first start by pushing our bikes up on this icy part. Then the whole trail is basically covered by fallen trees. Like some you can ride under, some you had to carry your bike over. But in a way it was a nice break from just riding on the road. Get a bit of this more gravel cycling adventure feeling, which I like a lot more than just riding on the road. Oh, the sun is shining. We're coming to Italy, Dolomiti. Oh, fuck. Oh. oh, next mission upcoming. Oh, fuck. Are you <laughs> kidding me? You, he didn't told us that. <laughs> I mean, obviously you have a 35 kilo bike. So the worst part sometimes is just the uphills and the steep of it, the steepness of the uphills. But I don't know, you get used to it. It's the same as with wind. Wind can make you stronger. Heavy bike can make you also stronger. <laughs> oh, finally. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, I feel like my head and my neck are not together. No. Oh. Yeah. They're like that. separated? Yeah. <laughs> can you put them together? Just, we can do like okay. in the I have a strap here. Just push, push. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, it was fun, but like at three o'clock, I went down. My body started to hurt and like my upper part of the back, my ass, they are sore. And it feels really good to be here now at the camping. We will get the hut and the bike will rest for two days now. I will go ski touring and yeah, rest the butt. <laughs> Buongiorno. We're going to La Varella hut. A little mountain hut where we hope to be some snow. And ski around there for two days. It might require a bit of hiking. I think it's boot packing time. With hiking I mean hiking with shoes. <sighs> okay. I'll put my skis off here. Uh, oh. Well, I mean, after a little tumble yesterday, you know, muscles are not really happy about having a heavy backpack. My neck is, I can't turn more than this. So compared to cycling, it's uh, heavier. Hold on. Oh, well. now I found you. Mark. I had never been to Dolomites before. Planning the tours and the route just based on fat map and Google was quite hard, I must admit. When you then got to a place and then you saw what's up there was completely different to what you expected. Anna, yeah. look up there. <laughs> Thank you for skiing down there. That would be adventure skiing for sure. Maybe a bit too rocky for my taste. Yeah. So you thought something is rideable, but then you see that, okay, this year it's not. While we were planning this tour, we knew that we will have a lot of clouds and fog. So we created a, a route in the Suntoa 
and downloaded it to the watch and we're just following that track now because yeah soon we will have no visibility and at that point it's really nice to have a route to follow <laughs> now it's flat Ole Dole Dov, Kinkelane Kof. Koffelane Binkebane, Ole Dole Dov. It'd be prettier if there was a lot of snow there. Yeah, so. like if the whole valley would be white. That's how it was in the pictures. That's, that's the Instagram. <laughs> I mean, look at me. <laughs> Lavarella, Montefane, 2050. I'm definitely not a skier and I think I am a cyclist. I grew up with skiing more than with cycling but over the years I think skiing had got for me out of out of range just because it was very expensive to get a weekend up in the mountain the lifts the renting etc I guess I went back to skiing because the feeling of skiing is also like adrenaline you also discover in a crazy way like I just find it crazy like I find insane that you can actually climb a mountain with a pair of skis Every time I put them on, I'm like, I'm like really going into this steepness with like a pair of skis and some random skins in the back. Like it just blows, blows my mind. So we have found a very interesting couloir and we're looking at if it's safe enough to go. It looks steep, really steep. I would say that I have been thinking about mountain safety and avalanche risk a lot the last years. You have to keep the safety on your mind. Just chilling, willing, uh, sunny day in the Dolomites. Looking at the pros up there. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, so here is a crack. During the avalanche accident I was in earlier, that was a weak layer I triggered. So it's like, I can't stop thinking of covered weak layers in the snowpack. Yeah. Okay, so here is one more crack. Yeah, then comes the crust layer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking of my accident earlier this year. Yeah. The snow that went off, it wasn't big. But I traveled so long with the avalanche. And I mean, this is the same. It's not a lot of, it's not a lot of snow, yeah. but we end up in a hole. Yeah. yeah. The consequences of continuing to the top of the couloir would only be nice skiing, but not safe at all. Yeah, Henna and me, we took the decision to not continue. Turning around in a situation like this, when you have a really nice face, you would like to ski, but you can't because it's dangerous, is always hard to take. But making a decision like this, I would say is never a failure. A failure would be if we took the decision to continue. Turning around with nothing happening is never a failure. That's success, for sure. Nice! Well, it was fun, fun stuff. Good to be skiing or snowboarding. Yeah, riding. riding.
looks like a sea. Life of a snowboarder. <laughs> okay, I got good news. Uh, the spa is for free tonight, and we can both have the regular menu and pizza. Perfecto. Well, we're looking at the day that it's going to be up, down, up, <laughs> literally, big hill up now, starting straight away. That's good for warm up. Then a long downhill. Beautiful though. I've done it last summer. And then a long, pretty steepish uphill at the end, just to finish the day. Paso Fedaya. It's a, it's a very known paso. the lightweight bike <laughs> good job girl I'm not even tired <laughs> have you ever been about 2100 with your bike I have not <laughs> so we're above the highest point of Sweden right now and I have biked here that's crazy I think I feel so proud actually and now it's downhill and I will just enjoy the views Wow! It can be slippery, fucking brain breeze. For me, actually, the downhills, I wasn't that scared, but it was harder for the body to, to stay in shape. It's hard to just break for a whole day. No, but seriously, the last part to the hut is a lake. And as I said last time I checked, <laughs> lakes are flat until then. <laughs> what do we have? Thousand vertical yeah. and 14 kilometers. Yeah. One of the goals for the trip, uh, despite being hard, that it's still enjoyable. And we don't need to do crazy long days and push it crazy much. I had too much lunch. I'm feeling sick. Uh, it's so crazy, you still do it. I find this fun. Fun like destroying my body. Uh, 160 vertical until candy break. The tricky thing is when you ride your bike in the Dolomites or in the mountains in general, there's always some climbing that needs to be done with the bike and it's impossible to avoid it. Uh, when we moved from Lavarella to uh, Marmelada, it required climbing and the climb was pretty steep one. It's done as part of a, a cycling race in, that's all held in Italy. And we did it with 40 kilo bikes. It's so random, the people are skiing next to where you're cycling. <sighs> like what the hell? 3.5 kilometers an hour. <laughs> oh, jokes. I've been thinking the last hill of 400 vertical meters that if I can do this, everyone can do this because I could never imagine I would do this like in my whole life. Cheers! <laughs> yes. I mean, look at this, girls! Shaka bra!
it's I don't know which day <laughs> of the tour and we are basically in a lift up to Marmolada it's crowded it's very crowded to be in a lift like we have been quite isolated from people the last few days and now it's like stuck in here but thinking of what we can get up there it is okay Watching social media, seeing that we have a lot of fresh pound up north, doesn't bother me that much. Okay, Hannah, dropping in. Three, two, one, go in. One of the things I've been thinking of lately is when you get obsessed with the thing that you must have fresh snow to ski. Nice! What's that? The snow is quite heavy and sticky at the top. It surprised me a bit. And there were some sharks on the part where I went down. Drop in! You can't affect the weather and you can't take control of that. The thing you can control is what you do with the opportunities that Mother Nature gives you. To create a life filled with emotions that is more positive than negative, that's up to you. That was a hard one! <laughs> First, I have to say that it's not that steep as it looks like from above. Take your time and the snow is variated. Anna and, and Malva have been dropping this kind of stuff for probably their life and I've not. And I thought I was like fearless. Maybe my head was like, oh, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get hurt. And you just go down with fear, which is probably the worst thing you can do. Oh, she's walking down. That's good. Take your time at the top part because the top part is the trickiest and then you will be more than fine after that. So just play it safe on the top. I'm going. I, I like it, like it's a very good feeling. It's just uh, like when you're in a mountain bike and you just kind of throw yourself into like a crazy bike park. If you have a mistake, uh, you're down. And if you don't, you're, you have a really good run. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, I had a couple of turns and that was it. Um, if I would have lost my ski, maybe I would have continued. Yeah, okay, I just think. I love to ski. Good job, girl. You gotta work out of there. An extra one. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get the proof for this one. The winter oh. definitely wasn't as I expected. This is an arrow. This winter I have also had a different mindset. Despite the bad snow, you can always find fun riding and you can uh, work on things that develop you as a rider. Once, once there's good snow, you can then enjoy that good snow even more. So despite the winter being bad, I would say it's been a good winter. Good job! Good job! That was fun! That was a fun run! Yeah. That snow was shit! We are on top of Marmolada right now. Which is the highest point of Dolomites, I think, maybe. Uh -huh. One more run to go. <sighs> Try to find some good stuff. Try to survive. <laughs> and then two days of biking.
The route planning app didn't show that there is a Nordic ski track in the winter, but it wasn't too bad when you just kept going straight. No breaking! We bike to school all year round. So like, even though it was icy, slushy, snowy, like whatever, we just bike to school. So in that sense, it's not as strange or scary thing. <laughs> Poor Scandinavian kids. <laughs> just like it's minus 20 and mom is like, okay, chop chop. I have had a idea of how road biking would be in in Italy that you just like have a wine yard on your right side you have this small little village on your left side with the church and it's an old man walking and it was exactly like I imagined I got this mamma mia feeling in my stomach it was so cozy look at this place yeah, it's beautiful. I feel a bit more fancy than what I look. <laughs> Is that enough? I don't know how to get the wine to Sweden now, but what I just have to figure something out. Especially your fridge. And then you open it? I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the amount of people and the amount of cyclists, we didn't see basically any on the previous days. And then on the last day, all of a sudden, there was basically only cyclists everywhere, like coming either towards us or like uh, we passed them or they passed us. You could really see that cycling is a thing in Italy. I'm born in close to Stockholm, but I live in Kiruna. North part. Lavarella, uh Mermolada, -huh. and up at nearly 40. Because we have ski boots, like snowboard boots, yeah. and bindings, and the snowboard, and all the ski gear. Actually, I was thinking the last downhill, I'm like, we freaking made it. Yeah, I with no problems either. No. Everything went super smooth. It wasn't as hard as I thought, like what it would be like mix of a cycling and skiing. When you split it into different days, it worked super nicely, I yeah. think. I think I need a proper rest week after these last three intense weeks in my life. <laughs> <laughs> what we were looking for on the trip was to test if cycling and skiing and snowboarding can really be combined in a nice way that is on, not only a pure suffer fest and I would say we found it. 100% you can enjoy the mountains with less snow, 
more biking and uh, good company. <laughs> Third change for Hannah. I definitely think it's a way to to see everything different to people who like does cycling and skiing as their maybe winter and summer sports. Well, you can just combine it.